the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones, it's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip-hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. Oh, man, that's my... Yeah, I don't know what is he gonna make. You know, but hey, I like it. We gonna just trust the process and let it do what it do. You ready, man? Yes, sir. We just straight raw here. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu, and I am your co-host. TMD. And uh, I want to thank our uh, main sponsor, Knox Pro uh, Academy, located here in Van Nuys, California. A. That's right. If you want to find out all things Knox Pro, just log on to the World Wide Web at KnoxPro.com. And I also want to take this time here to say thank you to one of my sponsors, one of our sponsors of the show here by the name of Dr. Alex Corbin Liu, Optimist. Anything with eyes, you know, people ask, well, Keisha, where do you get your, where do you, where do you get your cool sunglasses in? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I go to this cat here. He's been taking care of my eyes for the last three years or so. And, you know, he's a guy that, you know, when you're messing with your eyeballs, mm-hmm. you got to go to somebody you can trust. Absolutely. So make sure you follow him. It's at Dr. Alex Corbin, and you can check him out. It's at 19735 Colima Road. Number four, Rolling Heights, California, 91748. Make sure you can check them out also as well. Check out their website. It is www.alexcorbinliu.com. Also, if you want to make a call and make an appointment or whatever, just call at 908-468-4622. That's Dr. Alex Liu. Office located in Colima Road, Rolling Heights. So make sure when you go check them out, you know, tell them Big Keith sent you. And also, another one of our sponsors here uh, for this show here, would like to give a big shout out to Dr. Gabe uh, Rosen, Rosenthal. All right. So he, this cat here, has become a well respected dentist in the community with his passion of dentistry and commitment of serving those in need. His position in performing smile makeovers on clients like celebrities, influencers, Hollywood heavy hitters, and professional athletes is the reason why I'm there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he's actively uh, expanding his impact on dental care for everyone by launching his brand. So make sure to check out Dr. Gabe uh, you can go to, it's uh, 16133 Ventura Boulevard, Suite 1045. It's in Encino, California, 91436, okay? And you can call to as well. The phone number there is 818-937-422, number 3, 937-4223. Or visit their website, it is www.gaberossenthaldds.com. Okay, check them out. Achieve that perfect smile with Rossenthal Dental. Follow them on IG, Dr. Gabe Rossenthal. And there you have it. Thank you very much for all the sponsorship. Big shout to out to guys. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. So what's happening, man? Oh. Man, you know. Uh, Hold on, I need another beer, man. I need another oh, drink. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, man. Pick it up. We over here just, uh, you know, getting getting our minds right. That's you know, right. It's been a long day. You know, it, uh, I ran into you and your uh, beautiful family this uh, past weekend at the uh, S- uh, Simi Valley uh, Toy and Comic uh, Show. Um, and um, it, it was an awesome uh, little event there, you know, with lots of good uh, merchandise, lots of stuff. You had a big line, as always. Mm. Um, you know, very generous with the fans. Uh, a lot of people interested, uh, you know. They were uh, they were coming to get that new Tribal War T-shirt. 
and you know, all this stuff going on and a new action figure. That's how they were asking about my Funko Pop. I saw the 11 by 14 rock in uh, 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 you uh -huh. the Hell of Cell. That was dope. I mean, that that sold pretty good out there, you know. And you know, it, it, we had all kind of stuff out there, you know. And it was a good a good time, you know, to be out there and meet and greet all the fans and so forth. So thank you. Thank you to all the fans that came to see you. Boy. Um, I noticed you had one of your grandsons running around. He was a big <laughs> ball of energy. And I'll tell you what, he he was running around and he fell. Yeah. And he took the most perfect flat back bump that I've ever seen a, a three-year-old take. Is there any Fatu who doesn't know how to bump? Uh, no, I doubt it. I mean, he he he. I think they the come feet. out the womb bumping. He, I think so, because his his feet went straight up. Yeah. He hit, hit back, and and parents were gassed. They're like, <gasps> and he just popped right up, like no, no cell. A big, of course. <laughs> but it was the most perfect uh, flat back bump. I just I just had to bring that up. I was I think my uh, myself like you guys are so natural at every kind of physical movement you guys do, <laughs> even falling at us a comic book. If we would have fell a little bit closer to me, I would have juiced. Him. <laughs> I would have just pulled off the blade and cut his forehead. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh no, my goodness! But, but big shout out to my grandson King. Yeah, right, right. K I N I. The man is named Kingy. So you know, uh, and then of course uh, Samson was there working security for yeah, you, man. Ain't all man. six foot six. He was the tallest person at, at the whole convention. Uh, um, you know, and he, he doesn't like to really. You know, he he was messing up my vibe over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Samson, if it ain't, like, he feels like when he comes to work mm -hmm. with me, it's not like, you know, that's exactly what it is, is work. Because I'll sit there, and he has to do everything. Make sure the banners mm -hmm, is up, mm -hmm. make sure all the pictures is up, make sure the computer, the freaking, uh, uh, you know, the card, the, the square card is, I mean, all that stuff. And then he doesn't want anybody to come work with him. Mm -hmm. And so normally when I go to these Comic-Cons, they always appoint a helper to your table. But this kid, if I bring him, he don't want nobody helping him. So this guy here, I tell him, because Samson, he, he was moving like a freaking turtle. <laughs> I was already late to the Comic-Con, right? Uh -huh. So I was trying to have him hurry up. And so while he was moving, I, I reached over, and I see the guy, he came in and introduced himself. Hi, Kisi, yada, 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 I'm your helper. I said, okay, thank you. you. I'll tell you what, you can help me. Well, you can help put up those banners right there. So what does he do? He goes to open the banners up, right? And he puts it up. I just got this new banner. The banner came down, just dropped. Cling, cling, cling. <laughs> broke the whole side of my new banner. He broke it? Yeah. I look over to Samson, mm -hmm. and he gives me that grin like, <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to let anybody do it. Let me do it. Uh -huh. And so that was that, you know, through, so through the whole vibe with Samson, you know, he's, he's not that type of person to Comic-Con with me. Now, unless it's busy, 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He has no choice but to... I always try to teach my kids, uh, you, you got to work for it. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, I like it when he comes with me to these certain events, you know, his father and son time. But at the same time, he sees what his pops is going through. You know, he sees, like, you know, especially if he knows the inside that I'm not feeling too well that day. Mm -hmm. But he'll see, you know, just to... The, the like what we always teach here at Knox Pro, adapt, right? Your fan base is always your fan base, number one. They have nothing to do with how bad of a day you had. All you know is they came to see you. And so you got to put on that, you know, switch up. Whatever that got you upset before you got there, it has nothing to do with your fans that are standing in line. So I try to teach him the values of stuff like that, you know, and and you know he he said yeah you know, <laughs> he'll kind of just nod his head you know what I mean and you know he'll tell me what the numbers we made that day and mm -hmm. blah 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 and and so I always cut ten percent to him you know so he can work for his money you know and uh, you know it uh, to me it helps him be responsible you know that I always teach my kids nothing's free in this world man you got to get out there and grind whether you like it or not you got to get out there and grind and see the Big pictures because there's birds in the nest at home. Right. They wait for you to, you know, put food in that mouth. So, so at the end of the day, you know, he 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 gets used to as far as the grind of the, his pops out there. And so that's why I, I, I preach mm -hmm. and I stay on him. Mm -hmm. You know, his grades, his school, his education, his, 
you know, his uh, personality, you know, everything is uh, above is very important for him, you know, to continue that uh, at his school. And uh, big shout out to Notre Dame High School out there. So, yeah, so we'll see, man. He, he, he eats a lot. So <laughs> I was telling him, you better have a good job when you grow up. Because I'll tell you right now, what I'm paying for you to eat, man, come on. You know? Uh, for the listeners out there, we're talking about uh, Kishi's youngest son, Samson, who just happens to be, I think, your tallest uh, yeah. son. He, he's, he's pretty up there. Six, six. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah, I know. He, Fif- 15 years old. He, yes, yeah, he sure stood about out. About 280. We, we was at the, the bar. Size take 16 shoe. 16? Six that, up, uh, isn't Shaquille O'Neal like a 13? If he or... would have slapped you with his shoe, you'd be in an instant coma. Oh. <sighs> right? Yeah, somebody would be in an instant coma. Huh? Oh, my God. 16? 16. Wait a minute. That's like, like 16. Shaquille O'Neal has double, like that same <laughs> size. Double wide. Oh, my God. Exactly. You want to see the invoice on that? No. Exactly. No, no. no. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, wow, but it, it was an awesome event. And, and of course, also uh, o- over the weekend, yeah. I'm not sure if you heard, uh, but uh, Ole Anderson uh, passed away. Ah. Uh, Ole Anderson from the uh, Four Horsemen and, ah. of course, one half of the Minnesota Wrecking Crew. He was uh, he tagged team with Gene Anderson. Um, in your travels, uh, first of all, condolences to the um, uh, uh uh, Anderson family and, 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 and friends, yep. um, condolences. Um, and throughout your travels, did you ever come across Ole Anderson? Well, uh, Ole was in charge uh, when me and Sammy uh, first came into WCW back in the day when we were the first Paul Heyman guys. So, yes, he was in charge. He, he was, you know, he was a rough, a rough cat. Uh, his ways, you know, that old school cat, but... You know, we, we were already used to stuff like that from our uncles. You know, he, he was that hardcore business type of dude. You know what I mean? He he didn't like anything to look pulling punches and stuff like that. And he was just that way how he was trained back in the day. And I get it, you know. And, uh, you know, he, he liked us uh, back in the day. But we used to come through and, you know, just getting there working with the, the Road Warriors and Steiners and, you know, our, our style of work was just, you know, just the same as those cats. So Ole really liked that, uh, liked that about the Samoans. You know, he knew about Uncle Alfonsica, but he used to always say, are you just as tough as your uncles? <laughs> are you just as tough as your dad? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so big, you know, uh, condolences uh, to his family, uh, all his loved ones, uh, those that knew him as far as in the wrestling world, well, you already know what type of cat this guy was. And, uh, you know, he's done a lot uh, for the industry. You know, was, uh, I, don't, I don't recall if he's in the Hall of Fame, uh, but I, I feel that, you know, guys like this that really help pave the way, you know, they're just, they're, uh, they need not to be lost in the shuffle. Their memories uh, and what they have done for the industry uh, you know, they've definitely had a, uh, a part in help paving the way. So hopefully, you know, somewhere down the line that, you know, I would like to see him be uh, inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm, I'm going to uh, say that he's not in the Hall of Fame because I believe that him and Vince McMahon, you know, they had a, a really bad falling out somewhere down the line. And I believe uh, Vince even tried to hire him a, a few times. And the, the story is he told Vince basically to, to go f*** himself, like, you mm. know, and Vince came back another or time. You won't get into the Hall of Fame like that, then. <laughs> Yeah, so... I mean, uh, you know, for the fans, you know, he, we all know what he's done for the industry, so... And I think there was another story, you know, even, uh, Vince even tried to get Linda McMahon to help him mm-hmm. get him signed because that's how valuable his knowledge and his history and just his experience. Yeah. Vince was trying to hire him, but, man, I guess the, the hatred ran deep, so I'm just going to go on a limb... And say uh, no that he's he's not in in the Hall of Fame. All right, well let's get let's get uh, brother Ole into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, if you guys are all listening out out there. Hashtag Ole Anderson into the Hall of Fame. There it is. Hashtag Ole Anderson in the Hall of Fame. So um, last week, you know, we were chopping it up. We were talking about some of uh, the enhancement talents throughout yeah. uh, the business. 
And man, let's, I just want to spend the rest of the evening and you oh, know, well, well, you know, well. before we even start with that, <laughs> what piece, is this? <laughs> the, the ringmaster. The ringmaster. Holy what do you got here? Holy. Wow. Wow. If you guys can see this, what? Yeah. Look. Thank you. I mean, thank you. Thank you. What, what is it called? Technically a whiskey smash, but we'll call this a whiskey smash. Whiskey smash from the ringmaster. Well, hey, so, salute, big Keith. I guess I'm gonna get smashed on this. One. We'll see. <laughs> yes, sir. Salute. Salute. Big, big cheers to everybody listening tonight. That's um, awesome, 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 awesome. Right, he's gargling it. <laughs> Did you you just gargle your whiskey <laughs> smash? <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Was that a BSK thing? That's, that's like a Ric Flair. Woo. Man, Ringmaster, this is delicious. It is. Wow, big shout out to Ringmaster. I'm about to let's let's give us a round of applause for this drink here, Joey. Clap, 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 clap. Golf clap, golf clap. All right, all right. Uh, wow, 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 man, wow. Man, this this tastes good, Ringmaster. Man. Y'all make sure y'all y'all need a good bartender. Y'all go ahead and just holler at the show here. You know it'll be for a slight fee, for a slight fee. Oh, that is really good. Yeah, man. Mm. That's like some type of drink you would want to like. Just you know have it with somebody that you you know you about just you know, about ready to just get your freak on. <laughs> I was waiting for you to spend. I was waiting for you to I was trying to find the right word. Uh, <laughs> you know, your freak on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, this would oh. be a perfect drink yeah. to get your freak on. Got me thinking about Mary J. Blige. Well, well, I was just going to ask, well, what would Mickey the music Minaj, be? Okay, well, okay, so Mickey Minaj, yeah. and Mary J. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, Barry, you know, I got to go Barry Mary White. White. Mm. Teddy Pendergrass, you know. Turn out off the, the lights. Light a candle. candle. You know that. Huh? That's my shit. Turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm plugging shit. <laughs> oh man, this is good. Oh yeah. All right, so go ahead. This. Okay, so you know, mm. God, you know, to to do this dance that is called professional wrestling. Yeah. It takes two to tango, right? I right. mean, we're, if we're talking traditionally, it takes two to tango, so to speak. And to be able to uh, do the dance, well, you gotta you can't have a... go out in the ring and put yourself over. Mm, no, <laughs> no, you gotta have a good dancing partner. Yeah, we gonna talk to you, fans. We gonna talk to you. Right, right. You gotta have a good dancing partner. And what um, we're referring to as a dancing partner, we're talking about man, good workers who who um, who make um, who is supposed to be the star look like the star. And hmm. uh, in return, some of these guys uh, are the stars themselves, and they walk out. You know, golden, and we're talking about guys like uh, Barry Horowitz. Mm. We're talking about guys like um, Charlie Fulton. Charlie Fulton. Uh, you, who, is this? I keep Charlie? bringing that up all the yes, time. Yes, you, you know, know you that? do. So, who, so, so please tell and, us a little bit more uh, about Charlie. I Fulton. ain't even getting paid from Charlie Fulton to keep t calling his name is, is out that, there. Uh, like it's, you know, I, he just had a lot to do with, you know, uh, schooling me about the game. During, you know, during a live crowd, right? Because that's probably the only time that I really, really, you know, got to work with Charlie, is he would he wouldn't come during training at the house with Uncle Alpha in Hamden, Connecticut, and the only time I would see him is when we're at a live show, you know, be it a high school or whatever, you know, ind independent shows, right? And so my uncle, I guess he knew all along. And I didn't understand it. I thought it was me, like, because, you know, I was ripped. I was, you know, in good shape. You know, I was a young horse. I could do pretty much everything, you know. But I didn't realize without having a person to guide you and work, take the bumps and get heat on you to get sympathy. And I didn't realize how important a role that he played. And so I took that valuable lesson as I moved on in professional wrestling. These type of guys, are, they'll call them like TV enhancement or jobbers. Or I never liked it using that name, jobbers, because, you know, in reality, let, let's give their flowers, you know, the flowers where they belong. Is these type of wrestlers that, you know, the, the network or, you know, uh, the TV, they, they never put these guys over. They never tell them, you know, give them their flowers and, 
you know, nor do they even add some of these guys into, you know, the Hall of Fame. But, you know, as far as being one of the boys, you know, it takes two to dance. And when you have a guy that, you know, can work with pretty much anybody and make a person look like a superstar, well, these, these are the guys that I'm talking about. The people that you guys out there call jobbers, in case you don't use that name on these cats here. So to, to me, they're even better workers than the superstars because they make the superstars. There's some superstars, they, they don't even know fundamentals. They don't even know how to headlock takeover and, you know, call a spot from there. And now it's, you know, you can almost like sit in the back, A, B, C, D, E. Well, what happened on the spots if you go A, B and you mess up on C? See, I break my knee or break my, you know, whatever, off of a leapfrog or something. Now what you going to do in front of 70,000 people? Well, guess what? This so-called jobber guy, like a guy like Barry Horowitz, Horowitz. Mm -hmm. Charlie Fulton, uh, and these just a few of the names that I'm throwing out there. These cats will turn that into, well, people will even forget about your leg or whatever that you're hurt. Oh, they'll even work harder to finish that match for you. And here, here's, the, here's the thing. And they're not even going over. So they're putting their body on the line, doing extra work just to continue to, you know, go with the, the marquee guy. So, yeah, so from now on, if I ever come to an independent signing or show or blah, 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 you know, I like to listen to a lot of the guys in the locker room. Just, you know, I always say you just sit back, open your ears, shut your mouth, and you can always hear some that are smart and some that are not smart. You know, I've heard some of the, these independent kids call, you know, jobber this, jobber that, and so forth. That, that's not cool. You know what I mean? That's not, dude, you know, come on. Yeah, and, and I think half of them wouldn't even say it to someone like Barry Horowitz's face. Oh, hell he's no. he's old school, so I think he might, uh, you know, shoot and take you down. Most most kids uh, today, uh, but before, you know, uh, we're going to go to a quick commercial. Uh, when we come back... I got to have another drink. Absolutely. When we come back, I just wanted you, I want to ask you, like, who are some of the guys you, uh, who stands out most uh, in your memory to, to this day, who you enjoyed working the most, and then uh, we got a little bit more uh, when we come back. So uh, we will see you in a few minutes. Yeah. Keep it locked. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is TMD. Hey, do you want to get more eyes on your business? Cool. Well, all you got to do is write us, rikishifatu.com, and we will make that happen. Rikishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, with more Rikishi Fatu off the top. Oh, yeah. Mm. Big quiche. So, um, how you liking your drink? Man, I'm, you know, this is just so delicious. It's nice and uh, making me relax, mm. you know what I mean? Mm. Just, mm. Me too, me too. Yeah, uh, I found a new drink now I can have with my... Okay, just... just Whiskey right. smash. Yeah. So, yeah. um... Too you much know, TMI, too much TMI. When, yeah, right. <laughs> when you, <laughs> so uh, when you got to the WWF, um, who are some of the guys that you really uh, enjoyed working with and that still stands out to your memory uh, today? Well, you know, I, di I did mention this before. Uh, you know, I uh, definitely uh, friends that you're close to. Friends is like Godfather, Taker, uh, um, you know, uh, Yoko, obviously. You know, because it was just fun. Like, you knew if you potato these guys here, mm. accidentally potato, or maybe you're just trying to rib them, right. you knew a receipt was coming back, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But, you know, the you know for guys that uh, that outside of the crew, man, that was just good people, like, you know, for instance, like guys like, you know, Owen Hart, um, man, you knew you had to go to work with this cat here. You know what I mean? Because he's going to bring his A game. Like, he was always on full throttle up there. I mean, take every which way bump. You know what I mean? Nonstop movement, you know, arm drags, hip toss, leapfrogs. And he would do it just jokingly with you. Mm -hmm. So you knew you had to work your widow it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, guys like, uh, you know, when I felt like I had to uh, put on my thinking cap, you know, it would always uh, probably guys like, uh, you know, Bret Hart, you know, who I know is one of your favorites, you know. Oh, yes, absolutely. By the way, Brett, you know, I got to get another selfie for <laughs> My co-host TMD, <laughs> yeah, I, I owe him one from uh, yeah. 2015. That's when I raped you. <laughs> so anyhow, I know I was intoxicated. Listen yeah. to episode three. Yeah. You'll, you'll know exactly yeah. what he's talking about. But yeah, for for to answer the question, I I would you know I had to put on my thinking cap with Brett, and I I love I love that because you know you. It's kind of like you're still trying to perfect your gravity. You're like you're going, you know, you're going to learn something from this guy you're working with, you know. And he would never like, you know, we would never do the same, shit. you know, different crowds, different angles, you know, different, you know, uh, different type of matches. You guys had a you know? banger of a match at the Manhattan Center on Monday Night Raw one year. I think it was like '93. That's when they was, I think it was one of the first or you were fought to when it just started the Monday Night Raw. Yeah, right? um, I um, you know I would record matches back in the day. Yeah, and that was one of them on the you know compilation of matches I would have. Yeah, that was such a good match, and it was it was like one of your first single matches too. It was like one of the first time they they split the head shrinkers. And that you know that was there you know during the travel days. Uh, it, I think it, it was a, a flight delay or we damn near almost. We were late anyways coming into the building because we'd always fly into Newark to Jetport. You know, why, I don't know, but, you know, we'd fly in there and we rushed over, and by the time we got there, you know, you know, Monday Night Raw is Monday Night Raw. You know, we get ready to go. And it was just getting there. We knew exactly at the end of the deal, just to finish. The rest we just, won, you know, winged it out there. And, you know, it, it was, you know, again, I was, I was the... The less experience, I want to say, mm -hmm. and giving the respect to a, a legend like that, you know, I just kind of follow and so forth, did my part. When it's time to turn on the heat, turn it on. Like, you know, Brett liked it to let you bring it, you know, versus too soft, you know, and the way he, uh, you know, sells everything. And he, he's, just a, he's just a perfectionist. And I learned a lot. So these are certain guys when you get on the road. You kind of know, like, you know, when you're going to have a day off or a night off or when you're going to have to work hard. So you walk into the dressing room and you'll see your name against who and who. I don't know who I'm going to work with until I get there. And when you see stuff like that, it's like a night off or, you know, damn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn something today. So, yeah, so, you know, a lot of names. I can go on. Well, uh, what about what about some of the enhancement talent guys? Um, I know with the head shrinkers, uh, you guys were, you know, you were teaming a lot, so you didn't um, have many singles uh, matches as far too. But when you guys were teaming as head shrinkers, what enhancement talent tag teams did you guys enjoy working with? Man, probably, uh, oh my goodness, um, you know, the Bushwhackers. Yeah. I, but they're not enhancement, but that's well, kind of well, that's kind of they... the level they were in the mid mid card, mm -hmm. and so when you're bringing in new teams. Mm -hmm. They kind of put, you know, you know, the legends like that in who, by the way, you know, everybody respected these two cats. And they never, you know, they never had a problem with blah, blah, blah. So you always wanted to, you know, take care of guys like that. But you knew that you were put there to be able to go to the next level, like mm -hmm. get over. Mm -hmm. And so when I used to see names like that, I really didn't. You know, I knew it was going to be a night off, but I knew I couldn't do we couldn't really turn the heat on the way we want to turn it on, just out of, you know, just knowing that, you know, Uncle Luke and Butch, right? Mm -hmm. And so, but when you work against, you know, uh, uh, the new cats, let's just say new students or new cats from wherever that they come through, you know, the first thing we ask, yo, you can take bumps, right? I say, yeah, okay. So we're just going to snug up a little, just listen out there. And that's pretty much it. You know, tell them this is our finish, you already know. The rest just, you know, just just follow out there. And so that gave us an opportunity because we we only, like, had one chance at it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being like, you know, you know, you're out and you wait for this opportunity to finally get into WWF, you definitely don't want to blow that opportunity. Like, 
they're going to put you on TV. And if you're not getting over on TV, you might not be booked at TV again. And so all these cats here, our uncle taught us. So we get out there, we do the thing, put a whooping on them, get over the best way we can, you know, make it believable. And then at the end of the day, we come back. I think we used to get, uh, we get payoff for TV payoff. TV payoff was different from your house show payoff. So it was a small, it wasn't nothing big. And then the company feel like they're putting you on TV, don't really have to pay you that much. Right. So we would take that because we knew we were those guys at one time. We would take that money and we would give it to the guys who we're working with. It's our way of saying thank you. You know, what they were probably making less than 50 bucks, mm -hmm. counting gas and all that stuff, you know. they, But, you know, they were excited to be booked, get on TV by WWF. Who right. wouldn't be, right? Right. But not knowing that they're going to come and, you know, they know they're going to do, you know, the work for everybody. They call it the job for everybody. Right. right? But at the same time, it's just them. That's like, you know, their little, you know, run of fame, I guess, just to be on TV. Well, um, man, Keish, there's a clip of, of you. This is a Hedgefingers match, and you guys yeah. are up against two enhancement talents. And this is a spot I've never seen in my life. And, and you've done some crazy sh**. This, I don't, know, I don't know how else to describe it other than just to say it. Oh, but, just um, spit it out. I'm trying. Yeah. Have a drink. <laughs> take, take another one of those. You guys, uh, you... Uh, the ringmaster. Had the, you had the guy on, on the, the mats... Yeah. And you were on the oh, top. Lord. Yeah. And you jumped from the top rope to the outside of the ring. And and I don't know how he I mean I know how you didn't kill him because you protected him. But um there's there's even a, another backstory to that is Tommy Dreamer was up next, apparently. Yeah. And apparently that, that spot wasn't approved uh, and um you guys got a, a lot of heat for that. And and Tommy Dreamer's match, uh, I guess it was a trial, got cut because so much commotion had happened because of that particular spot with yeah. with those enhancement talents. Do you do you remember any of that? Oh yeah, I felt it. I remember it very clear. Um, and so that it's it's part of you know the bloodline training, the Samoan dynasty, access, opportunity, exposure. We knew that we had to get over. It. So nobody knew exactly what we were going to do. So we go out there and, you know, think of things already, you know, in our mind to go out there to do this spot instead of the splash into the ring. Let's just go to the floor. Now, this floor here was the gym floor. This sucker here was, I mean, hard. So, you know, of course, I would prep for it, I, I think... I know I had like a couple pair of knee pads with an ace bandage up underneath there. And when I took that bump, you know, it, let me back up. When I was standing there in the corner, it's like I almost couldn't get, get up there by myself. And you see, I had to grab Sammy's hair and pull him up just to kind of so I can post off of him to get my balance. And as I stood up, you know, tall, I'm, a, I'm like, you know, 6'2 already. So I'm looking down, dude, this looks like a far, a long jump. But by the time you get up there, it's too late to turn back. So I just, you know, took the fall, landed, and man, I'll tell you, man, I felt like my whole right knee just shattered. And so you can see, like, I'm kind of getting up slowly. You know, of course, you know, we're sitting there, the camera's right there in your face, and you can't, you, you don't want to move. Because where's your money, Joey? In your face. Right In your here. face. Mm -hmm. So as that camera's there, I'm going to wait till that camera moves. Finally, when it moves, I got up and I was like, man. So anyhow, by the time, you know, we did the one, two, three, we busted them open with, uh, I think it was, yeah, with the pineapples. That was something nobody knew. We was coming to get over. And when we came back, the only person to us that we wanted to satisfy was Vex McMahon. But nobody else, you know, when we came back, nobody, and I mean nobody, not even Tommy Dreamer or anybody, came to us voicing their, you know, their opinion of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like there was nothing. Right. 
And so, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, hey, sorry, maybe, you know, we didn't know that they cut his match because of that. But, you know, I, I'm I'm here, Tommy. You know what I mean? I ain't hard to find. Big Keese is all over the place. You know, if there's any heat between us two, yo, you, you got my number. You know, well, we talking 25 years or something. Let it go. Right, right. Let it go. It wasn't nothing intentional. You know what I mean? And... Yeah, so I, I didn't hear what he said or, you know, I never even seen that news. And, you know, I don't believe shit until I see the person. Right. And he's just, you know, right then and there, man up or shut the f*** up. Man. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a, a memorable spot, and uh, I got I got to tell you, we're gonna go to commercial, and when we come back, I want to try something uh, a little different. I want to I want to um, get Kishi's ranking on some of the best enhancement talents that I've pulled up, mm. um, and I just wanted you to get a ranking and see where uh, they they rank on Kishi's list. Hey. We got more, and we'll be right back with more off the top with Rikishi Fatu. Cheers to you. Kishi Fatu, off the top. We're coming right back. Welcome back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Now, hey, Big hey, Kish, hey, what's happening? I put together a, a little list here of my favorite en enhancement talents of all time. Okay. And um, I'm going to ask you um, what you, uh, I want you to rank them, basically. All right. And you know what? If you've never heard of them or you, you can't remember them, we'll pass on them. But um, I'm pretty sure you know this list. This is pretty much from your, your era. We're going to start off with um, Jim Powers. Muscular. So on a one to a ten, where, where would you uh, rate Jim Powers? Work wise, personality wise, it all adds up. It could be a five, it could be a seven, uh, it could be a ten. It's up to you. Well, he he had great charisma, you know. So I want to probably say he's eight when he used to do that. Blah, 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 blah. But I mean, when he worked, I, uh, yeah, he was. I'd probably say he'd have to be a, I don't know, maybe a four. Okay. Yeah, possibly a four. Okay. How about his partner Paul Roma? These were the young stallions. Of oh course. yeah, yeah. Good bodies. Yeah, you know, bodies yeah. Like eight. You know. Yeah. I say that's eight. He was also. Uh, he didn't have the charisma that Jim Powers had. Okay. You know, so let's give let's rate him a five on there. Okay. But as far as his work rise, I got to go a little bit more than Jim Powers. Okay. So I got to give him like you know, man, let's go six. Okay, that's a Just six. A, okay. You know what I mean? How about Louis Spicoli, aka Rad Radford? Oh damn! You remember Louis Spicoli? Yeah, wake up, wake up, Louis, wake up, Louis, <laughs> my man, Louis boy. Yes, rest is rest in peace. Oh, Louis was a good worker. Uh, you know, had not too much of charisma, so I want to say from one to ten, let's go, let's go four in charisma. Okay. But as far as you know, working wise, hell, this kid can bump. He can do it all, man. So I want to probably go, you know, with Louis is seven and a half. Okay. You know? Seven and a half. How about Barry yeah. Horowitz? Oh, hey, let, let, let's go ahead and give the flowers what it's due. I'm gonna go ahead and pat my 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 own back, you know, because uh, I'm sure. Barry's gonna like what I'm gonna say. Out of one in ten, a ten. Yes, sir. He's Charisma, absolutely. You know, out of, out of one in ten working, a ten. I was so happy to see him get that winning streak in the in the '90s, the late '90s, mm -hmm. when he was going over on on the folks. Man, I was so happy to see that. Yeah, I'm happy that he's. Uh, you know, he, the, you know, Barry was probably the most booked mid card talent to work against guys to really get other guys over. And Barry, you can really, if you had sat down and talked to this guy here, you can learn a few things from him. I know one thing, that he should have got an endorsement from damn Subway sandwiches. Yeah, why is that? Because this all this guy ever ate <laughs> was tuna salad. <laughs> tuna salad. I mean, you know, when he get close to talking to you, you can almost smell that tuna, you know, tuna breath, you know? And he loved it. And the guy was very... He didn't live that lifestyle of superstar. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, that's and he, you know he knew the difference from, you know, uh, leaving that in the arena, and when he's traveling, he didn't splurge as far as, you know, living in expensive hotels and stuff like that. And hey, you know, you, you learn from guys like that. You know, and so for me, you know, I, I look for I look for Barry, you know, being in the Hall of Fame one day. 
You know what I mean? WWE throw this guy in there. Mm-hmm. Barry only worked with everybody and everybody. Right. You know, been there what twenty something years. Been working. I would love to see Barry become one of the agents for the enhancement talent. I mean, the guy knows his. That that would be awesome. How about Dwayne Gill, aka Gilberg? Oh yeah. Well, uh, you know, sometimes you get lucky <laughs> on a booking, right? Yeah. I mean, Dwayne Gill. This is you just so happen to have a good gimmick. You know, that looks like, you know, a big superstar. And, you know, hey, he, he made some money off of that gimmick. So, you know, from one to ten talent, one. Okay, yep, okay. From one to ten charisma, let's go Let's go eight. Right? As okay. far as being a good guy, yeah. oh, he's, he's, he's 11 and a half. Okay. You know, but I'll, you know, tell it like it is. Uh, I, I, got a, I got tired of seeing him when he came out. <laughs> I said, if I ever see another fake Goldberg coming out, I'm just going to come out there and slap him myself. I, I got a few uh, more for you b- uh, before we uh, call it a night. What about Iron Mike Sharp? Oh, Lord. The man who took, like, you know, when the arena's closed, <laughs> everybody's still waiting. Uh, Iron Mike Sharp takes, like, the showers for three hours, costing the company money, you know, to keep a... So I, I, I think he got fined a couple times like that. Yeah. He is the most cleanest... I think he was one of those guys that... A germ freak. Yeah, maybe right? a little OCD, maybe. Yeah, it was something. He had something going on. <laughs> he wasn't all there, man. But, I mean, he, he was built a different way, too, you know? Okay. But he, he was a good worker. I mean, a good, you know, he's the big guy. He looks good for a guy to go over and, you know, you know, get a win on top of big Iron Mike Sharp. You know, he was like, I don't know, maybe was he 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, maybe, you know, 290 he was a big guy, so whenever the you know a new talent that they're trying to get over gets over on on Mike Port, I think Mike put over a lot, many more people in the history of professional wrestling. Wow! Yeah, but a good guy, awesome. Real, I mean, would you rank him? Uh, but I got to go talent wise. Let's go six. Okay, six. Because he couldn't do a lot of running and do a lot of. You know, technical stuff. He was like a kick and punch type of guy. Right, right, right. And he Charisma, had that big one little forearm leather yeah. piece deal. Gimmick. Charisma's good. I'd, I'd have to go eight or nine. Okay. Because he had a good mouthpiece on him when he got time. Okay. You know, to talk and so forth. But yeah. What about leaping Lanny Poffo? Whoa, whoa. The genius. Yeah, man. Jeez, uh, he, he's a uh, man. I know. Uh, man. Leaping, I don't know. I'm sorry. Just other things come to my mind instead of wrestling with this cat here. <laughs> but that's going to be another story. We, oh, okay, so that yeah. brings me to my last and final because you said you had a story. We're talking about Steve Lombardi, a.k.a. MVP, a.k.a. the Brooklyn Brawler. That just was did everything. When I don't know, I didn't know if he was a wrestler mm-hmm. or was he a stooge mm-hmm. or was he just a guy that just did extra stuff for Pat Patterson and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Vince McMahon and the whole crew and, you know, like a runner, man. Because mm-hmm. I would see him all the time in the back. and I, But I never see him work in the ring. Mm-hmm. So every time, it's, and, and I would run in against him. We was always cool, but, you know, because I knew he would run and get, you know, the office. You know, Don Laurinaitis and all these cats here. You know, food. They wouldn't eat the food that we eating in the catering. So I was like, where you guys going? He, Are we going to get food for So I said, we, we, what you getting? That was your Chinese food or whatever. So they would always order extra. And they'd come over there. And, of course, it wasn't because of me because they would give it to big man Yoko. Because mm. Yoko, they used to call him Money. That's what Yoko's nickname was in the locker room. What's up, Money? And so Brawler and these guys would call Yoko that. But Brawler... You know, I I, I do want to say, psychology wise, he's up there to an eight. Oh wow! Yeah, he's up there to an eight. Bumping wise, working wise, eh, let's let's go let's go six. Okay. He's kind of more so of a punch and kick type of guy to me. You know, especially when he has a gimmick on either the Brooklyn brawler with his face painted, or he can do the doink blah 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 mm-hmm. sort. Or even the the manager of Kamala, right? So he, you know, I rate him to be, you know, as far as working, I don't know, six or something. Okay. You know what I mean? But yeah, inside story, that, that was, 
he was the guy I used to always tell him or ask him, how do you do it? Because you've been here in WWE, and he talks about over 30-something years. How did you do it? Meantime, I already knew how he did it. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to see if he was going to tell me how he did it. How did he do it? Yeah, sometimes people don't want to admit that they're stooges. Mm -hmm. Man, that's, you know, that's... I don't hate on stuff like that, but I just know to stay away from people like that. Mm -hmm. I get it. That's that's the way they tend to want to keep their paycheck coming. For me and for our family, we like to get our own respect. And the respect is like doing your work. Like you believe in yourself, Joey. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be the type of person that kiss ass to the office to get a job. If you know damn well you are just as good as The Rock or John Cena or Jeff Hardy or Randy Orton and you can hold your part of the, the bargain when it's time to put that main event match together, by all means. That's how you want to get remembered and get respect like that. You know, you damn sure don't want to get it, you know, the, any other way. Yes, sir. Because they ain't, at the end of the day... I mean, they let him go. You think they ever called him to come back again? Mm. So all that stooging and all that, you know, you running into the same people on the indie circuit like we like to call ourselves the outlaws out there. When you run into the outlaws of the game out there, oh, you can rest assured. You can rest assured people ain't coming at you the same way. And so, you know, that's a little tip for a lot of you independent cats that are out there. Or even a lot of you superstars, so-called superstars, that are out there in the mix. You know, you just, you know, stay in your lane. You don't have to downgrade anybody else or, you know, be a stooge or, a, you know, I, I don't even like to call people marks. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. There's just a certain word that, but, you know, as wrestlers, we, we know that because there is no more... Nobody that's not smart in this business, even with the fans. Sometimes the fans know more than what we do, you know. So to be able to call these cats marks and stuff and people who don't understand the matches, you know, I'm here to say we, we cut that out right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you would never hear me call somebody like that, though. You know, because without these so-called marks you want to call them, I call them fans. Mm -hmm. Without the fans, there is no Kishi. Without the fans, there is no bloodline. So let's get your training straight from the beginning of the game. You dig? Yes, sir. Big salute to the fans out oh, there. Oh, man. I need to drop the knowledge. Uh, big salute to you. Yes, sir. Uh, is Likewise. there any, any last words uh, you'd like to say before we take off? You know what? I want to thank all the fans always tuning in. I just did a signing up in Phoenix, Arizona at the Wrestling Guy store. Big shout out to Brother Tony and his wife, Jana uh, Vila out there. If you're, in, if you're ever in Phoenix, go check it out. Man, I came over there. You see on my Instagram, you know, people, I've never been to this store. But the way that I was treated, the way I was, you know, welcomed to the store, not only by the owners, but also the fans, you know, uh, videos, they don't lie. Pictures don't lie. Man, they came out loud and strong. And so I just want to say thank you, you know. They talked about our podcast. You know, one guy's, well, what, what, what's that guy who you're sitting with? What's that? <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking about TMD, TMD. <laughs> just go on my Instagram, you, you know, go follow him. There. But the words, you know, from the fans being one-on-one -on -one with them is that they said, man, we love the podcast. We love the company, the podcast, because here, Joey, you and I know, when we come through here, the cameras, we wait till the cameras get set up. Soon as we drop, we ready to go. There is no script. There is no nothing. I don't even want to know what you're going to ask me. It's all off the top. It's off the top. And so with that now, you know, make sure you guys check them out. Go check out the Wrestling Guy store. And, uh, you know, if this drops before the weekend, which it should be dropping this Friday, right, I'm going to be overseas for the love of wrestling. I'll be there uh, this weekend. It'll be March 2nd and March 3rd. So uh big shout out to all the fans out there in UK. Make sure you stop me. 
I mean, just stop by me uh, because I got a couple new swag T-shirts, you know, specially made for the UK. And, you know, I just want to show love and just get your feedback on the, on the hottest podcast in the line. Mm-hmm. Right? The hottest podcast. And it's called Rikishi Fatu Off the Top. Rikishi Fatu Off the Top. We're coming right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yes, more sir. Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. Yo, Big Kish, uh, before we're getting things started here, uh, you were playing some old school Run DMC. Hell, man, that's one of my favorite songs. What you song know? was that? It, um, it was uh, Down with the Kings. Mm. Uh, so I usually, you know, whenever I'm in that uh, workout mood or just to get my ass up and get myself together and get me going, I'll start to bump that jam there. So yeah. well, I, I see know. you was moving pretty good. Off yeah, I, I love Run DMC. And as a matter yeah. of fact, today, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know if you heard, but uh, man, uh, Jam Master J's um, uh, murderers are going to uh, actually, they're, gonna, they're found guilty. They're going to jail, it looks like. So they found right. two people guilty of his murder uh, back in 2002. And what, what, you know, what was it? I mean, man, who, who? Uh, unfortunately, you know, yeah. at, at such as life, it, it was somebody really cl- close to him, it was a childhood friend, mm-hmm. and that that guy's godson. So they they both went in there, you know. Apparently, you know, it was over um, uh, drug issues. Um, man, who knows what happened? But uh, man, it, it, oh, so somebody he knew. Yeah, that was close. Like, to he, him. he knew really well, and the, and, yeah. and you hear those kind of things in life that the people who who do you the worst, you know, are the closest to you. you know? Yeah, man. I mean, we you know we 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 talk about the you know a legend here. Mm. You know what I mean? And we're talking about family. You know, obviously to be in, in that circle, you know, they had to have uh, you know known each other and and had love for each other. But you know, somewhere there, you know, I don't want to speculate on. You know, uh, you know what the ins and outs is about it, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, we we talk about, you know, two sons, three sons uh, has been involved with the nephew. You now, you know, you you lost one, now you got the other two. That's uh, I'm assuming going to be for the rest of their life, you know, behind bars and stuff. And so my point is, man, we we need to stop killing each other. We need to stop, you know. Uh, uh, you know, just get things right, man. Get things, get the situations right. Yeah, because at the end of the day, it's just, you know, enough of, you know, us killing each other. You know what I mean? Talk it out. Talk, you know, because you can't get that back. Once you, you you know, you put that, that, that person, you know, down and, you know, you checking him out from life, and you can never get that back. So understand the consequences you know, when you guys are, or anybody, anybody decides to, you know, take that you know, take that step, you know, just realize, man, it's just, you know, nobody wins. Nobody wins, Joey, you know, and, you know, sorry j- j- just to hear this. I didn't know about this news here, but, you know, I'm a big fan of Run DMC, man. Right. I mean, for years, man. man, you know, being on the road. And I actually heard this song you know, Yoko used to bump this song a lot, you know, because, you know, he was like, we the kings, man. We the kings. And, you know, Yoko was always, like, up up with, you know, music, you know. And, uh, you know, Run DMC was one of those cats, you know, one of those tapes that, you know, back in the day, we had those cassette tapes. Mm-hmm. So he would always, like, you know, you know, he turned me on to Run DMC. And so, you know, I'm, I'm uh, you know, truly sad. You know, about this whole situation, you know, about, you know, uh, Run DMC and also those that, you know, had, you know, did this, you know, crime. Like, you know, again, Mm. you know, this needs to stop, you know. Yes, sir. Nobody wins. Nobody wins when you decide to commit, you know, a murder, you know, on, on anybody. So just understand that. And like I always say, you know, at the end of this, uh, at the end of our podcast every week, you know, I like to spit out something positive. And this is what I always say. It's free to be kind to one another. And it's time to smarten up. And we out. 
It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen. All right, y'all. Tune in next week for more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu because what we're going to be talking about is the most famous finisher in pro wrestling history. Big Kish, we want to know <laughs> who is your favorite recipient of the stink face in your whole career? Well, Joey, why why do we got to why do we got to give the people that? What do you why? mean? Well, I mean, we all know what the stink face is. Mm -hmm. We all know what the most best stink face that I've given in my career to who, should I say? Which one was it? Oh, tune in next week. Catch the Rikishi Fatu Podcast streaming on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube.